Okay, let's talk about halogenation reactions of alkenes. Sometimes people say it's not a halogenation, it's a dihalogenation. That's tipping my hand, so we're going to add X2 to our alkene. We're going to add two halogens. So let's, let's do a simple alkene first. And let's add Br2 to our alkene. Now I'm going to write, when I write Br2, I'm going to show the bond between the two bromines. And the reason we show that bond is because in our mechanism, we're going to need to break that bond. So we, we should explicitly show the, the bond. Now, the first step in this reaction, we will learn this mechanism, involves the attack of the alkene on one of the halogens, in this case, bromine. We're going to break our halogen-halogen bond, in this case our bromine-bromine bond, and one of the lone pairs, this is kind of a tricky part, one of the lone pairs on one of these halogens will turn around and attack the double bond, one side of the double bond. Doesn't matter which side you pick, just have to go to one side or the other. So all three of these arrows are required for the halogenation reaction. If you trace these bonds, we're not with the, the BRBR bond is going to be broken, and this bromine is now attached to both carbons of our alkene. And it looks like this. This is a weird structure, okay? We know three-membered rings are terrible. They're unstable. So this thing is not going to stick around very long. But it's called a bromonium ion. And you can imagine if we use chlorine, did addition of chlorine, we would make a chloronium or an iodonium. There are other, other species we could form. This bromonium ion is not going to stick around. It's a really strong electrophile. And it just so happens we have a weak nucleophile here in bromine, uh, in bromide. So the bromide is going to attack this bromonium ion. And the way the bromonium, uh, bromide attacks is it sneaks around and attacks the more highly substituted carbon of our bromonium ion. And that breaks open our ring and we form a dibromide. And if you want to be fancy about it, it's called a vicinal dibromide. Vicinal because these bromines are in the same vicinity, they're actually on neighboring carbons. So it's a vicinal dibromide. Fantastic. Okay, so, so that's the mechanism of dihalogenation. It, the mechanism is the same for Cl2 or I2. Um, let's talk a little bit about stereochemistry. So let's show this alkene. Again, if we want to talk about stereochemistry, we must always go to rings. Here's our bromine. The alkene attacks. We break the BRBR bond and... Our lone pair on bromine turns around and attacks the alkene. And uh, I'm going to assume the Br2 attacked from the top face. So our two bonds to bromine are also going to be on the top face. H3C, great. Okay, so here's our bromonium ion. What happens to the bromonium ion? Well, the bromo bromonium ion up top got opened up by the weakly nucleophilic bromide. The same thing will happen here. And when this bromide up top attacked, it attacked at the more highly substituted carbon of the bromonium ion. Same thing is going to happen here. We will attack at the more highly substituted side. And we actually get inversion of stereochemistry here. So this is kind of SN2-like. So when we redraw this product, the stereochemistry at this carbon will be unchanged. The bromine is still on the top. The hydrogen is still on the bottom. Now, of course, this bond that we broke is gone. That carbon-carbon bromine bond is gone. But that doesn't affect this right-hand carbon. On the left-hand carbon, now this Br- came in from the back face. It's going to be down. And as a result, our methyl group is going to be pushed up. 
So it's SN2-like because there's inversion of stereochemistry going on. So here's our dibromide. Now notice the things that we added are now trans on the alkene. And that makes this an anti-addition. You form the bromonium ion on one face of the alkene. I'll typically draw the top. And then the, the halide that opens it up attacks from the opposite face. And so if, if I put the bromonium ion on the top face, the halide attacks from the bottom face. So this leads to an anti-addition. This is the first anti-addition we've seen. But you can have syn additions and anti-additions. And dihalogenations involve anti-additions and go through this bromonium or sometimes called a halonium ion intermediate.